So, hey, uh, the other day, I was in the middle of class and my friend passes his phone. He's like, dude, check this out. And it's a screenshot. He was chatting with someone on WhatsApp and suddenly a message pops up in the middle which says, messages you sent to this chat and calls are now secure with end-to-end -end encryption. Tap for more info. So I was like, dude, what's all this about? I'm like, WhatsApp encryption. I did explain it to him, but if you're one of those people who's wondering what all this is about, you're at the right place. Alright, so now let's look at a simple definition of what encryption is all about. Encryption uh, when googled is a definition, encryption is the process of encoding messages or information in such a way that only authorized parties can read it. The simple example of this would be if you write something on a piece of paper in English and, and give it to someone, they will be able to read it because it is written in English and they know English. But if you write it in some other language which you don't know or in a special kind of language that you've created, if you encode it into a different set of characters, they will not be able to read it. So you are the only person who can read it. It again defines the same thing. Encryption is the process of encoding information in such a way that only authorized parties can read it. So now we've understood what encryption is about. To go further on, we also need to understand how WhatsApp works. WhatsApp is a mixture of whole bunch of software, whole bunch of programs and stuff for nerds, not for simple public like we are. Uh, so I'll put this in a very simple manner. There is a person X and a person Y. Person X has to send a message to person Y. The, when he sends a message to Y, it does not directly travel to Y. Instead, it passes through a server. There is a server. When X sends a message, it goes to the server. Since the message is addressed to Y, the server sends it to Y. Now, we are, server is like a mediator. And this server, in WhatsApp's case, is owned by WhatsApp because it is the one running this application and it is the one that owns the server here. So, I hope I made myself clear in explaining both encryption and WhatsApp. Now, let's put these two concepts together. When you send a message, when X sends a message, it is, it is coded into a set of characters that cannot be read by anyone else except WhatsApp. And that, that is the exact meaning of what we have learned till now, till here. Just keep that in mind right now. So when X sends a message, it passes through the server and then goes to Y. But all the dat data in the middle is completely encoded. That means no one in the middle can read the data. The moment it leaves X phone, it is a set of characters that cannot be recognized. Until it reaches Y's phone, it is the same case. But the, the minute it reaches Y's phone, it gets decrypted. It gets decrypted and shows up as the normal set of characters that X sent, the original message that X sent. That is where it says end-to-end -end encryption, from one end to the other end. Hope I've made myself clear in explaining end-to-end -end encryption. I'll, I'll try to explain the same concept in probably a more simpler manner than this one. Okay, let us look at a scenario. We'll be looking at two scenarios in two cases. Case one would be before encryption. We're going to compare WhatsApp to a classroom right now, to a part of the classroom right now. Case one would be before encryption and case two would be after encryption. Look at case one now. You're sitting here, your best friend, uh, your teacher made your best friend sit about a couple of rows uh, after you. You're not sitting side by side, but you want to tell something, you really badly want to tell him something. You write it down on a piece of paper, you pass it. So there's a guy who's sitting in the middle, you ask him to give it to him. And he does, he, he takes the paper and passes it on to the other guy, uh, to your friend. 
Scenario one would be someone in the middle. There's a dude who who so badly wants to know your secrets. I don't know why. So he tries to pick up that piece of paper and reads the information in it, and eventually it passes on to your friend. Eventually it passes on to your friend. But in the middle, there is this person who sneaked into your message, who sneaked into your information, or technically speaking, stole your information. Yes, he he did steal your information. And the guy who passed the paper on is your server here. So your ex, your friend is Y. The guy in the middle is the WhatsApp server, and this guy who sneaked into your message is an intruder. Is an intruder. Now he's got your message. Scenario two: There's no guy who sneaked into your message. You sent a message. Uh, the mediator passed it on to your friend. So you sent a message. Uh, from X has sent a message to the server. The server has passed it on to Y. But accidentally, your teacher saw you passing a chip to him, and that guy passing a chip to your best friend. So the teacher is curious to know what what it's all about. You are not going to tell him. Your best friend is not going to tell him. So is the person he's going to ask. He's going to ask the mediator now. Because he's a teacher. Because he's a lecturer. He's a he's a state of power. And if you say no uh, to the lecturer, it's not going to work. So the mediator will tell uh, the lecturer that okay, sir, he passed on this chip, and this all, all this was written. Now your lecturer has all the information only because it passed through the mediator. You're getting my point, right? The mediator had to give the information to the teacher because it is an authority. It is it is a it's a state of power. Here, I would consider the state of power to be the government. So you're sending a message from X. It goes to the server. You send it to Y. But your government, your federal laws, your federal courts say, WhatsApp. I doubt X intentions uh, and what he sent a message to Y. I really want to know what it's about. So now you have no choice but to show me your messages. And as it is, WhatsApp or the mediator guy in our story would have to tell him what information has been passed because he is the one who mediated it. Case two: WhatsApp with encryption. Scenario one: This time you write a chit. But you write it in a own set of characters that only you and your friend can understand. Now you give it to your mediator. He gives it to your friend. But in the middle, there is again this guy who is sneaking into you or who is snooping on your messages. But the thing here is, you wouldn't understand a word because you have encrypted it into a set of characters only authorized parties. And authorized parties here is you and your friend. There is no one else who can understand this message right now. So. The chance of someone intruding on you, someone stealing your information, is gone. In a WhatsApp sense, X sends a message to the server, and the server sends it back to Y. Sends it to Y, because the whole thing is encrypted. The guy who is hacked into technically hacked on your conversation or technically snooped on your conversation knows nothing, understands nothing. Done. Scenario two. Here again. You send a message through your mediator to your friend. It's an encrypted piece of paper. You send it through. Your teacher sees you doing that. Your teacher asks him, "Dude, uh, what is the message that X gave to Y? I want to know it." But all the mediator can say is, "Sorry, sir, not do I understand." So that's the point here. Now, even the mediator does not understand the information. Cannot read the information. Because it is encoded, it is end to end encoded. Only you and the recipient, that is your friend, can understand this message. No one else does. And this is what I wanted to talk in the beginning of the video when I said that WhatsApp is the authorized party and can understand the information. I asked you to keep that in mind, and we'll talk about it later. This is when I'll be telling you that WhatsApp has put in such a kind of encryption. That it can be, uh, wait, it cannot be understood even by the authorized party that is WhatsApp. Now the only authorized parties are the sender and the recipient, X and Y. No one except those two, no other party except those two, will be able to decrypt the information. 
generally when there is a when something is encrypted there is a key provided which is going to decrypt this information and uh, uh, most messaging services or most organizations which encrypt information have a certain key to decrypt it so when a certain government asks them or a powerful authority asks them to decrypt their information and showcase it in front of them they do that but here whatsapp has put in place a system to which even it does not uh, has put in place a locker to which even what it doesn't have a key the only two people that who will have a key to that locker will be you and your friend the sender and the recipient x and y so i have to tell you kudos to whatsapp on that the next time the government asks whatsapp to display a set of messages that a person has sent to another one all whatsapp will be saying is i'm sorry sir i don't have your messages i don't have any messages sorry so i hope i have made my point clear and you know trying to explain how end to end encryption works and why it is important all right so even after you watch this video on social media there is there will always be outrage about every decision because every coin has two sides this one too does when we talk of the government asking someone to asking the authority asking whatsapp or whatever messaging service it is to display the messages of a user it does not always mean it is trying to sneak on your privacy uh, let us look at a scenario where non state actors i hope you understand when i say non state actors organizations which work against the people to harm the people let us say there is a group of people who want to uh do something wrong to the society they are discussing uh, the government uh, is you know they are discussing on whatsapp the government comes to know that there is something going on but now when they ask whatsapp to give them the information on what is wrong with it whatsapp cannot give you the information on the same now that is a disadvantage when you look at the civic authorities the the government's point of view what uh what what's happened is doing right now is wrong but when you look at the user point of view where your messages are being secured to a different level to a level where even the person who is giving you the freedom of sending messages is not able to read it the only two people who will be able to do that is you and the person who is receiving it you're being put to a level of priority where your secure security reaches a different level So yes this is a positive outcome this is a really positive thing if you don't know whatsapp encryption is going on since 2013 14 season this is the first time it's encrypted all its users encrypted the whole 1 billion users that whatsapp possesses people will say what they want to and things will be said so but this is what is exactly happened and this is how I try to explain this whole lot of thing to you i hope i was able to do that well and also this is probably the first video i'll be sending out to 800 subscribers the last time i checked it out uh, that was about a couple of hours ago was uh, 796 so i'm almost near 800 like almost uh when you look at it compared to other youtubers it looks like a very small number but for me it's very important it's close to my heart i would like to thank every single one of you who subscribed to this channel if you're not please do subscribe and uh that's it for now if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and uh, share this video you know people want to know what all this is about people want to know what they're using and how they're using what they're using so do share this video hope you guys liked it and thank you guys for watching i'll catch you guys in the next one then stay awesome